What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and yet another average victory against a lower league opposition. Because um, let's face it, I mean, that's the only way we're getting our victories these days. You know, Morkum, Fulham, who I know are Premier League, but they're going to be championship next year, and now Luton. I mean, just all teams that we should be beating, and then we do, and then it's fine. And even though today's performance overall was better... You look at the result, you look at how many missed opportunities we had, it's still not good enough. You know, there's still a lot of fixing that needs done, a lot of issues that need ironing out. And honestly, I I look at the lineup today and I look at what Lampard did differently today. I can appreciate the fact that he's now trying some different stuff, but I think the problem is is that you didn't really set us up very well <laughs> to handle what we knew was going to be a lot of them pinned in and then suddenly breaking out quickly. Because that's all the lower sides can really do is just pack it in and then hope to hit us on a counterattack. And they actually did a couple times because we didn't really have a midfield that was set up to help protect our defense. Now, I don't mind the 4-4-2, but if you're going to do a 4-4-2, it needs to be where all four of your midfielders are supposed to be helping out defensively. But we've got wings that are attacking wings. We don't have a Willian or a Pedro that are willing to work back. I thought Ziyech was going to be that, but he's not done that enough recently. Pulisic will get back occasionally, but he doesn't do it enough, and he's not really defensively capable of doing it. So we don't really have the setup to go with a 4-4-2. You know, we can do 4-2-3-1, but if that's what we were trying to do, where like maybe Werner's supposed to be kind of in behind, he didn't really drop back enough to be that either. So I just feel like we didn't really have a strong defensive setup today. And it, it, you could tell sometimes. There were times that Luton really took it to us and actually created some pretty good chances. In fact, I think they had just as many chances on target as we did. I be, maybe. We, made, we might have had a couple more. But I remember Kepa being tested a lot more than Luton's keeper being tested. And that's a problem, you know? And obviously, you know, we did score three compared to their one. So you could say, well, they were probably tested. Like, we probably tested him more. We just scored more. But it's still kind of an issue that, one, they're still creating chances against us. Like, as many as they did. As many good chances as they, as they did. And we were not doing enough in the final third to get those chances on target. Because we had way too many shots, not enough on target. It just didn't feel like we were set up well enough on either side. Um, at least on the attack, we did find, again, it was good play. But in that final third, it, we just didn't feel like we had an idea of what to do when we got in the box or in and around the box. So why, why aren't we figuring that out? Why don't we know what we're doing when we get there? So obviously, if you watched my last review, I kind of went off on Lampard a little bit. I, I was pissed. Um, and I, I still think the way things are going now, he's not going to last long. I think he's still too young. I think he's still too inexperienced. However, between last game against Leicester and then this one, I did hear a theory that people have been bringing up. Don't know if it's true. Don't know if these are just rumors. But there's talks that they're going to be bringing in an assistant coach to help Lampard. If that's true, I could see that. Because, don't get me wrong, I like Jody Morris. I think he did a fantastic job with our youth players. And I think he's, you know, done a good job in letting Lampard know, hey, these are the players that we need to be trying to... Ooh, sorry. These are the players we need to be trying to utilize more. I think he's done well there. However, as an assistant coach, he and Lampard are basically one and the same. You know, they, they work together at Derby. Now they're working together here. They're, they're not really, either of them, super experienced when it comes to managing a top-level club like Chelsea. So, I've heard talks that they're going to be going and getting experienced assistant manager, someone like, uh, I heard Harry Redknapp's uh, name mentioned. I know Avram Grant was also being talked about. So, like, possibly bringing in an experienced person to take over for Jody Morris, so that way Lampard's still the manager, but now he has an assistant that is more experienced than he is at managing top-level clubs, <laughs> managing a Premier League club. So that way now, he's still the manager. We still keep him. Because, again, I think he could be one day a great manager, but right now he's still too new. 
but this could be a good way to where now we bring in not only somebody who's got the experience, but also somebody different. You know, because one of the issues we've also been having is that Lampard's tactics have just gone stale. Teams have figured this out. So if you bring in an, an experienced manager who also has different ideas, now we've got some stuff to mix it up. Now we've got thing, you know, different tactics, different styles that now teams have to adjust to whenever they play us. So I really feel like that would be probably the best thing to happen. Um, in fact, one of the the comments on my last video was like, I wish we could just loan Lampard out as a manager for like a few years and then bring him back <laughs> with more experience. And honestly, like that's what I feel like this assistant coach thing would be, would be him still being here, still being involved, still managing, but having somebody to step in when things get rough and sort of take the pressure off of him a bit. Because that's what I really feel like he just lacks is the experience to deal with the pressure of you have to win here or things aren't going to last very long for you. Um, so anyways, Lampard being done, talk about individuals today. Keppa. <laughs> Keppa, Keppa, Keppa. Yeah. The first goal wasn't entirely his fault. I'm not going to say that like everybody did their jobs fantastic and then Keppa screwed the pooch. Everybody had an, a role to play in that. It wasn't closed down quick enough. The build-up play should have been blocked off a lot quicker. Zuma should have put himself in the way better on the shot. But my God, man. How many, how many, how many, how many, how many times do I have to say, move your freaking feet? Because, <laughs> again, just like it's been since he first got here, it's not changed a bit. Shot comes in, plant, plant rooted, on his heels, falling backwards, can't get his hand down in time, squirts up under him into the goal, and now suddenly we're under pressure. Because the game was ours at that point. There was, Luton were pressuring us high. They were putting a lot of energy into the game. They were giving it their all. We were in control. We were confident. We're like, we got this. Anytime they put high pressure, anytime they came at us quickly, we had enough to deal with it. Suddenly, that goal goes in, and suddenly Luton now have a bit of momentum. They've now scored. They've got some confidence. We're now kind of shaky in our passes, and it wasn't until you know Lampard made his changes in the second half that really we felt like we took full control of the game again. Up until the point that Hudson Odoi came on the field, it was anybody's game. Like, we, we still had our good moments. We still had our moments of moving the ball quickly, but our passes weren't connecting as well. Luton were having a lot more possession. They were creating the better chances. It all just seemed much more even after that goal went in for them. And that's why you need a keeper who's going to make those saves. Even though, again, defenders, midfield, should have done a better job leading up to the shot. However, <laughs> when you're supposed to be the number one keeper... Those are the shots you don't just miss. Those are the shots you don't just let squirt up under your hand. When your defenders fail you, that's when you need to step up and be like, this is my save. This is mine. I got this. You guys didn't do your jobs. I'm going to get pissed after I block this behind and goes out for a corner. I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to yell at all of you, but I'm not letting this in. He doesn't do that. He's not a keeper that can save a game for you. Mindy has done that for us before. Obviously, he's dropped off a bit, but... <laughs> I still remember more of the saves that Mindy makes that keeps us in a game as compared to Keppa, who doesn't make saves and suddenly now has put us under pressure. Now, obviously, he did make some good saves second half. Um, the one where it was one-on-one, -on -one, obviously, the guy did put it pretty close to him. And I think, honestly, that's Keppa's... That's his one strength. If it's a one-on-one -on -one chance and they put it near him, as long as it's not, like, down low and he needs to move his feet to get out of the way, if he can stand there... His reaction time is actually pretty good. So that what that shot that came in, he's good at getting his hand up and making that block. But if it's anywhere out of his reach, or if it's down low, anytime he has to move his feet, he's not going to do it. <laughs> he's just, I don't know why. I don't know how you can be at a top level for this long and just not change. <laughs> Especially when you've been called out for it several times. But he's still doing it, so... Yeah, he's, he's never going to make it at a top club unless he learns to grow and, and, and actually fixes that. Um, but yeah, so like the saves he made in the second half, I feel like just barely made up for the fact that he put us in danger in the first place. So defense, though, uh, you have Emerson, 
Zuma, Christensen, and James. I feel like James is more of a decision of he didn't play well against Leicester. I feel like after that game, Espilicueta is kind of shown that he is the first choice still, even though James is back from injury. So this is a chance for James to get a run out against a lower club, um, maybe build some of that confidence, still recovering from injury, and hopefully get back to where he was at the beginning of the season because he's not been there since like that first time he had to sit out for a little bit. Um, he did okay today, you know, better crosses overall, but still just had his moments where, like, the one that led to the chance that Kepa made the good save on, um, I mean, what is he doing? Ball is going out of play, nobody else, everybody thinks it's going out of play, and for some reason he thinks, no, I, I can save this, and instead of keeping possession, he's like, I'm gonna save this, but I gotta kick it away, and so he just boots it straight up, right to a striker, who has nobody near him. <laughs> Just like, what are you doing? Why are you keeping that in? You don't need to. It's a throw-in near midfield. Like, who cares if it goes out there? It was just, it was a weird decision. And he made a couple of those where it just, it felt like a weird decision to go for some of those tackles or for him to step out and pressure, which then left him sort of out of position. It didn't happen a whole lot, but it happened more than it should be for a player who's been, again, who started the season the way he did. It just felt like he, he's kind of lost his ability to make decisions, and that's concerning, you know, because he is younger, so those rash, rash decisions would be happening for a younger player. You know, you would expect that. But the beginning of the season, it didn't seem like he was there. It seemed like he had grown from last season. It seems like he, he had learned, you know, when to step and when not to step, when to get up in the attack and when to stay back, you know, and cover. But the past few games that I've seen him, it seems like he's gone back to he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, he doesn't know what decisions to be making. And it's cost us a couple times. So, I don't know. I really hope he can get back to the headspace he was in before <laughs> where he's been recently. Because, I mean, he's a good player when he's playing well. But when he's not, I mean, he just he looks like any other fullback. and It, it just doesn't really help you much. Uh, Zuma and Christensen had their ups and downs, uh, had a couple of moments where the, you know, good defending, good solid defending, good possession in the back, um, comfortable, you know, made sure that we kept possession so that way we could look to get it up the field. It didn't seem like they were as much looking to just keep possession back there. A lot of their passes did look to try to build the play and get it up the field instead of, well, let's just keep possession in the backfield. So I like that, but there are still a couple moments where just weird decisions on the ball decisions to dribble when you've got an attacker right near you, uh, dribbling into absolutely <laughs> nobody near you, uh, dribbling into those spaces. So now you've got pressure and now you've got nobody to play to as well. Whenever you just had a good option, you know, if you played the first time. Um, and then also just Zuma's feet have never, has never been a strong suit. So there were a couple times that he decided to try to take it and, you know, do a little bit of dribbling in the backfield, and anytime he does that, I definitely kind of feel worried because I never know what's going to happen. Um, but for the most part, they played well. It just, again, those those shaky moments, we've got to start knocking out of our game in the defense because those moments are the ones that lead to goals. Um, and then Emerson on the left side, decent game. You know, got up in the attack well. Defensively, don't really remember him doing a whole lot. I can remember like a couple good challenges. Um, but he didn't do anything poor today, just also didn't do anything that made me go, yes! You know, finally, Chilwell has to battle for his spot, which is sad, because I think Chilwell needs to battle for his spot. Um, midfield, Gilmore and Mount were the two midfielders, and both of them, you know, hardworking, very solid. I thought they both played well today. Um, Gilmore, again, doing what he does very well, better than Jorginho. You know, the distribution, the quick ball movement, um, his ability to run people down. He's not the fastest, but he's very quick. And also, I mean, he is smaller, so you don't always expect it. Very much like Conte, too, where you just sort of slip in and poke the ball away. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's not our greatest defensive player, but he does Jorginho's job better than Jorginho, and I think that's definitely something that needs to be looked at going forward. Um, but, yeah, he moved the ball very well, was involved in the build-up to the third goal, which a you know, nice little pass through to Hudson Adoy. I thought he played well, and Mount was, again, just a ball of energy in the midfield. I thought his finishing quality today was a little off. Most of the time, 
his shots are better and his final passes are a bit better. Um, it just seemed like his touch was a little, at least in the in the box, his touch was a little off. But I mean, he he still works his butt off. He still provides so much more off the ball than people like to give him credit for. So I mean, it just makes him out. It's what he does. And honestly, the fact that he got to be captain today, I think, is a sign of where it's going. Um, I even said, because some people were talking about, you know, Mount should be the next captain. I personally think he's definitely leading by example. I don't know. Like, that's the thing. I wish I, we could see a bit more of a captain who, like a Terry, someone who's willing to get in your ear, someone who's willing to, you know, kind of knock some heads around whenever things aren't going right and not, not necessarily like beat people down, but just someone to say, hey, let's go. You know, you're not, you're not playing well. You're not stepping it up. We need you to, you know, if it's a form thing, if it's a confidence thing, like then your captain can step in and say, Hey, it's all right. Calm down. Take a deep breath. Let's keep going. Keep pushing. You're, you'll get there eventually. But if it's a lack of effort, I don't see anybody going, Hey, what are you doing? Look, either pick up your ideas or get off the pitch. Cause we don't need that right now. I don't see anybody really doing that. Um, I just, you know, Espilicueta and Mount are the two that I see leading by example. You know, they just bust it every game, give everything they've got. They don't leave anything on the field. I mean, that's good leading by example, but I feel like we need a more vocal presence in the dressing room. So I don't know who that's going to be. Maybe Mount can be that eventually. You know, it's probably probably once he gets a bit older, because I don't think, you know, a lot of these players are going to be like, oh, what this, he's like, what, 21, 22? I don't think this kid's going to tell me what to do. Um, so that is something to look at, but good to see him get his first captain's arm and hopefully more of that to come. Christian Pulisic and Hakeem Ziyech were the wings, and okay, just had some good moments and then had some bad moments. Just okay. And I think for both of them, it's not a good sign that that's kind of where they are, especially against a team like Luton. They should be dominating the play. They should be the ones running everything. They should be the ones creating these opportunities. Ziek did have a couple crosses that led to opportunities, but I feel like they should be doing more in the finishing aspect, and especially Pulisic. You know, Ziek, he actually looked more to play today. Like he didn't seem like he was very confident in shooting today. Um, a lot of his best play came from slipping in James, who was making a good overlapping run. Um, but as far as the finishing aspect, he didn't really seem to be taking a whole lot of shots. He was more just kind of there to build up the play and, you know, make the pass that led to the final ball in. But Pulisic seemed like he was much more trying to make that final pass, trying to shoot, trying to find the net. And it just wasn't happening for him today. And it, it is concerning, you know, because he's a player that was finishing very well and now he's not. And again, injuries hamper that. I get that. And the injuries kill the confidence as well and without confidence the finishing just isn't quite right and of course you know with Werner on the field we'll definitely talk more about that in a second but yeah I feel like there should have been more quality in the finishing today and it just makes me wonder why is that still a problem because it's not even it's not just this game it's not like oh well you know he's been doing fine in the finishing just this one game he didn't play very well or this one game he was just unlucky with the shots, you know, they were just wide. It's been a while since he's really been clinical in his finishing. You know, the, there's the one opportunity where all he has to do is just bend it far post. Werner, fantastic leave, you know, dummies it, falls right to him. All he has to do is just curl it far post inside of the right foot, but he puts it right at the keeper. That's concerning. When you make decisions like that, that's... <sighs> You know, it, it's not something that you can just say like, oh, it's, it's okay, we'll work on it in training. Like, this is a game decision. In training, you're not in the same mindset as a game. You're not sitting there under pressure thinking about, all right, what am I going to do? In a game situation, you just, instincts kick in most of the time. So why are his instincts, like, letting him down? Why is, why is his instincts not helping him in the final third? So it's just, it is concerning going forward. You know, I hope he can get back to what we saw. You know, people, I, I hear it every single game, you know, after Project Restart, he was fantastic. You know, he needs to find that form that he had after Project Restart. They keep talking about it in every game. I'm like, yeah, he's, he's still not there. 
And he's got all this time. He's got all this chances to really get himself back to there. And he's not. And it's concerning. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's confidence. I don't know if it still is feeling the injury a little bit, if he's still not quite fully back to 100%. But whatever the case, I mean, we need him to be back to where he was. And Ziyech, too. Like, Ziyech started this season very well. I feel like his creativity has dropped off. I feel like his work rate without the ball has also dropped off. Um, I remember talking about him like he could be our next Willian because he was working back and winning the ball so well, and he's not really doing that anymore. Um, so both of them, I feel like, are players, especially when hudson Adoy comes on and tears it up almost instantly, both of them are players that you got to find form or else you might not find the field anymore. Um, and you don't want to be ruthless like that. Don't Again, don't want to just be like, oh, you're done. Like Never play here again. But at the same time, if you're not contributing, if you're not providing what we need you to and somebody else is, they deserve to play. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's tough and it's something I don't envy Lampard for, that he has to deal with all of these great players that some of them are not really performing and you don't want to just destroy them. But what's best for the team is hudson Adoy plays and either Pulisic or ZX sit. Like, that's how it is. So, uh, but finally the front two, uh, Abraham and Werner. Abraham obviously had a pretty good game today. I thought his first half was a lot better than his second half, and that's mainly just down to I thought second half we didn't really play well while he was on the field. It wasn't until he got, or until hudson Adoy came on and then he got his third goal that we actually started to control the play more, and then he was subbed off shortly after. So, um, yeah, second half, he just wasn't really involved much. It felt like his touches weren't really coming off. But first half, probably one of his best performances so far this season. Uh, he was the one that was making a lot of stuff happen, a lot of energy. And he's been very energetic in his last several games. But this game, he had the finishing touch. He had that ability to find the bottom corner. He had that ability to flick it on. And that's what we needed from him today. So getting a hat trick, hopefully a nice boost in confidence. Hopefully he can take that momentum and ride it. Because we need one of our strikers to be in good form. And it feels like every <laughs> every game don't know what to expect. You know, Giroud went on a little bit of a scoring run, and now he's kind of in a dry spell. Werner has been in a dry spell for forever. Abraham was on a dry spell, and now he's got his hat trick. Is he going to ride that momentum, or is it going to drop off again next game? It's hard to tell. And I feel like that's where we need more consistency from one of them. I don't know who. Again, I feel like even when Giroud's not scoring, he's still providing more for the team. So he is probably our most consistent performer, but I feel like we need a consistent finisher out of those three. Um, but yeah, overall, good game. But yeah, let's talk about Werner. Uh, I'll try to make this as quick as possible so this video doesn't go on too long, but... Uh, it's really disappointing whenever a player plays well, but he's a striker. <laughs> and he doesn't score. Because I will say, I liked a lot of what he did in the first half. I thought... He looked energetic, ran well with the ball, moved the ball well. He actually was involved in a couple of build-up plays. You know, he's not typically that type of player that can play the quick one-two, but he was doing all that pretty well. And like I said, the dummy that set up Polistic's chance, fantastic. But unfortunately, as a striker, if you're not finishing, it is something that's going to get brought up. That's why I think Giroud is so underappreciated is because he doesn't finish enough for a striker. Um, so it's kind of the, the catch-22. You're playing well, you're performing well, but you're not finishing as a striker. It's hard to say you had a great game. You know, I thought he had a good game. I thought he played well, but when it comes down to it, you didn't get those finishes. You didn't finish your chances that you did have. Um, you know, the build-up play that led to the penalty, great run. You know, beat those players very well. Used his speed well, drew the foul well, but then <laughs> the penalty. And honestly, I have my own opinions of this. Like as somebody who's coached before, and my dad is a coach. One of my dad's rules as coach is, if a player wins a, a penalty, whether it's they they get taken out completely or if it's just like they get nudged off the ball, his rule is most of the time you don't let the penalty taker take the penalty. Because honestly, either one, they're heated because they just got whacked in the box, or two, they just made a great run and then got fouled, and so they're out of breath. And honestly, Werner, when I 
watched him get taken out. Like he's lying on the ground on his back and he's just like breathing hard. I'm like, he shouldn't be taking this penalty. And then he picks up the ball thinking he really shouldn't be taking this penalty. And one of my rules is if a, if a striker is desperate for a goal, so if they're on the second and they're looking for the hat trick, or if it's a striker that's not scored in a while, I don't like letting those players take it either because the mind games just get to you. You're under pressure. You have to score. It's 12 yards out. Surely you can't miss this. Overthink, overthink, overthink. You blast it at the perfect height for the keeper to just get his hands there, and that's it. Now, was the keeper off his line? Probably. <laughs> you know, it, it's a rule that I don't necessarily like. You know, if they're, as long as they're not like three yards off the line, like that's obviously too much. But like that, if there were VAR, probably would have been pulled back because, yeah, his heel, I don't think, was touching the line. I think it was just off for his back foot. So it probably would have been pulled back. I honestly don't think that really matters. I think if it's a matter of like inches, it shouldn't it shouldn't really matter. Inches is not going to make it so much easier. It's just that extra step forward that you get. So it, I, I don't like the rule, but it probably would have been pulled back if VAR was involved because they would have drawn the line and been like, eh, nope, his foot was just off. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't think... I think even Giroud was trying to, like, take it from him because he knew, like, you shouldn't be taking this penalty. You just made a long run. You're out of breath. You're not in good form. Your confidence is shot. You're probably going to overthink this. And sure enough, that's exactly what he does and misses it. So I really am worried for Werner. Um, he's a player that I, f I feel like could just use a break. You know, <laughs> I'm not saying, like, just don't play for a while, but... If we could keep him out of the public eye for a little bit, let him just sort of build his confidence. I, I don't know how. I don't know what the best thing to do is because it's really hard to get a striker who's out of form, out of confidence, back into that. Like, it just, what it takes is them scoring. But the problem is it's kind of a constant cycle of you're out of form, you're, you don't have much confidence, so then you don't play well, you don't hit your shots well. When you're full of confidence, your shots are just... You, you got no problem. You're just like, I know what I'm doing. When you're not, you're trying to overdo it. You're hitting it too hard. So it leads to a lot of missed opportunities, which then leads to lower confidence. And so it just kind of slowly falls in on itself. So it's tough. You know, it's tough to know what to do with a striker who's just lacking that. Um, but we got to do something. Because he he's shown that he has the ability to be a clinical finisher. But right now, he's nowhere near that level. So we got, got to do something different, Lampard. Don't know what it is, but you got to do something different. Um, so it, it would be nice if like Abraham or Giroud could step up and be the target man, be the the focal, focal point for a lot of our attacks, be the finisher, so that way it takes some pressure off of him because I think the other thing that's adding a lot of pressure is the fact that we're not playing well and we're not winning. So whenever you're a striker and you're not finishing and then your team's not winning, it's a lot more pressure than if you're a striker and you're not finishing, but other people are, so your team's doing okay. Like, it just adds that pressure onto you because now you feel like you're the cause of the team not playing well. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's all a big mess, and I hate it for Werner because I think he's got good talent. I think he will be a good striker. But, man, it just it, it feels like nothing will go right for him. You know, even when he pokes it in against Leicester, I'm thinking, yeah, no, that's all sides. It's got to be. And it was. So, um, but anyways, final thing to talk about substitutes. Uh, Hudson Adoy, like I said, when he came on, changed the game for us. He's just, he's in form right now. He's playing well, full of energy. We got to keep playing him. I don't know which one you're going to sit, whether it's Ziek, whether it's Polisic, but unfortunately, one of them are going to have to sit to make room because you can't not play Hudson Adoy when he's in this type of form right now. Um, just, Fantastic player. Uh, Giroud came on, and so did Havertz. And Havertz became kind of the wide man for Ziyech. Uh, Giroud came on in place of Abraham. Both of them, okay. You know, Giroud was involved in a few plays that nearly led to chances. Havertz looked okay today. Um, I, I don't think he's a winger, and I think we all know he's not a winger. But I saw a bit more energy. I saw a bit more fight and desire from him. So it's good to see because I feel like that's something that's been a little lacking in the past few games. Uh, hopefully keep growing, keep recovering from, you know, 
dealing with COVID and all that, it would be nice to see him like fully recovered and fully just back to what we saw at the beginning of the season. Because even though you know people talked about, oh, he wasn't really playing well, his stats weren't looking good, but he was still involved in a lot of really good play. Um, so I feel like we need that Havertz back. And then Kovacic comes on for Mount, and he's just like for like sub, you know, bring on a hardworking midfielder for another hardworking midfielder. And yeah, that's what he did. He came in, played well, uh, set up the the pass that led to Werner's penalty. So yeah, Kovacic is just, he's a player that quietly plays decently enough. Um, but I would like to see more of the attack from him. So that pass was kind of a nice little, I guess, foray forward that we need a bit more from him. But yeah, all in all, I mean, it's a good result. Glad we're through the next round. Uh, we do have, who is it? It's another, you know, it's not a Premier League team. It's a lower team. Barnsley, that's who it is. So, I mean, we we have another decently easy game, I guess. Not going to be like a pushover by any stretch of the imagination, but not going to be, you know, playing against like one of the Premier League sides that are still left. Um, so that's good for us. It's good to keep having these games where we can let some of these players that are not our starting 11 get a chance to show, do they have a chance to challenge our starting 11 and actually put some pressure on them to win those spots back. Because, um, again, I feel like that competition is needed in a team, but <laughs> it doesn't really do much I think overall for our team confidence to just be the team like Luton or even if we beat Barnsley that doesn't really help the overall team confidence because it's like well you should be beating them um but I don't know hopefully maybe just getting a win it helps again Abraham getting his hat trick hopefully that helps him have a little bit of momentum going into the next game just so we can finally start to get a little bit more consistency but I think right now the main thing I'm hoping for is that these rumors about getting an, an experienced assistant coach in are true because that would be fantastic. It would be a good bump for the team, for Lampard. It would be a nice bump for the club to get that. Um, so don't know how much of it is true. We'll see. But anyways, with all that being said, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Chelsea reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next game. Peace out.